Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Alex King, and Bill G here on this Tuesday, March the 19th, 2019. It's 4 p.m. in New York, 1 p.m. in Los Angeles. It's 8 p.m. in London and Sydney, Australia. You should be around 7 a.m. Wherever you are in the world, thank you for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And I'm happy that uh, for the second day in a row, we're actually able to live stream. This is an, a good thing. This is an improvement. Or I just say <laughs> episode in a row. So it looks like Facebook finally got all their issues straightened out. That's a good thing. And uh, we were able to, uh, we, we did a short podcast this morning, Alex and Bill. Um, Steve Rowell, who you may or may not know, he was sexually abused by the vicar of his parish in the Church of England when he was a teenager and had been through quite a bit getting reparations and having even addressed and so forth. And he's now a spokesman and an advocate for other uh, victims and survivors, and he was interviewed in the one of the national papers in the UK. I believe it was the Mirror this past Sunday, and now the it's in, yeah, he's in. Uh, so he's being interviewed on television and getting all kinds of media requests and so forth, trying to do his best to reach out and help other survivors. And you know, so we 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 had to do a short podcast this morning because he had an interview to do right after, right, right in the middle of when we would normally be podcasting. So it, it was both exciting and, and uh, short, <laughs> but it was good stuff. <laughs> so this is our first full podcast using the live stream, but you know that's a good thing. And Bill, you have uh, you have a little thing you're going to do with us today. Why don't you tell people what we're going to be doing? And and by the way, anyone who's tuning into the live stream, feel free to type questions in because we'll be doing Q and A as well. But Bill, what what did you have in mind for us to do today? Well, what I had in mind today was to give you guys a, uh, a demonstration of what I do for my clients, which is um, spiritual response therapy. And just to give you a little background of what it is, it's a, um, a system of soul research where we research your soul records using a, a pendulum and a series of charts developed by Robert Detzler, uh, who is a um, spiritual counselor out in the Seattle, Washington area. And um, this is a, um, a um, since he started doing the uh, training pe other people had to do SRT in the late 1980s, um, today there are literally thousands of people across the uh, world who um, know how to use th this modality and use it for uh, seeing uh, clients and helping people live their best lives and open up uh, blockages uh, when it comes to uh, allowing good things to come into their lives and living their best lives. So that's that's basically what I do. Good stuff. All right. Yeah. And uh, Alex and I were also talking before the podcast started because we both kind of delved into, dived into the world of script writing and screenwriting, particularly script writing for the fiction podcast that we're putting together, The, the Grass is Greener. Uh, and Bill, you actually took a, a stab at this last week, but Alex, I think we both discovered that whole thing about script writing is, it's a lot more difficult than it sounds, doesn't it? Mm-hmm, definitely is. <laughs> it's kind I of a, it's, it's an eye-opener. <laughs> yeah, the issue I had was the difference between when I was writing my script back in the day that it was literally based on real life situations that had happened to me. So it was easier for me to just word for word what happened and what people right. said. So it was so much easier than trying to imagine and create. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's just say we have new respect for screenwriters and scriptwriters because, oh my Back. goodness, what a job they have. Back. Oh. But That's Bill promised us. What was that? <laughs> That's why they have a team. That's why they have a team. That's right. Yeah, you divide it up into pieces. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Bill, Bill promised us that he could clear all that negative angst for us, so maybe it'll make it easier for us to do our script writing. Sound good? Cool yeah, well, we, could, we can certainly try. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's see what happens then. So, okay. Bill, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do we do next? Because I have no idea what to do with SRT, so you're going to have to guide us through this whole thing. Okay. Well, uh, first I thought we would do something relatively simple. And uh, Alex has agreed to be my um, my online uh, my online client. Oh, yeah. And, uh, uh, something that uh, has been nagging the back of my mind, and I believe it's been spirit trying to uh, uh, you know trying to address something, is that um, you know um, 
Alex, uh, self-admittedly, is the the queen of insomnia. <laughs> the self-proclaimed is queen of insomnia, and I thought that uh, we would dive into that a little bit to see what was going on there. Um, and uh, then what we can do is we can uh, look into your uh, your script writing thing, and um, uh, then if we, anyone on the podcast and the live stream has any specific questions that they want to have addressed and, and cleared, we can do that. Very and cool. um, and if not, uh, there are other where other places we can go. And Alex and I were talking a little bit about that too. But we'll we'll get to we'll cross that bridge if we need to go to crossing that bridge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No, sounds great. Like we're, gonna have, we're gonna have plenty of material here to go through. I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with that. I don't. <laughs> I think we're. I think we're gonna be just fine. Okay, so first of all, uh, when I first sit down with a client, the first thing what, what I do is we sit down and we just clear and just um, make sure that we're nice and connected and we uh, we ask for to be connected to spirit and our high self and our high self committee. Our high self committee consists of souls that are there to help us out in life. And what we do is we reduce the number of members of the soul committee to the lowest number for the highest effectiveness, so which is usually about two or three. So we first check in, see, first I first check in for myself, how big is my self committee? It says it's got two. And I'll check in for Alex and see how many is in her self, high self committee. It's now saying it's nine. That's a little too many. Okay. So I got a lot of people. what we're people. gonna do is we're going to, um, we're going to call that herd a little bit. We're going to bring that back. We're going to bring down to the lowest number that is the highest effectiveness. All right, we now that got that down to two. So we've we've temporarily laid off those other ones. <laughs> I didn't know there were pink slips on the other side. That's cool. Yeah. Well, the thing is, there. I mean, it literal in the in the non physical world, it literally is too many put cooks in the kitchen is not necessarily yeah. a good thing. <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that that high self committee is operating at the highest level. And with that, I go to a chart that um, that measures the level of soul vibration for that particular group. And so I'm just going to check in with that. Where is one page two, one page one, what is, where is Alex's? High subcommittee right now. It's still in the incarnational incarnation level. So and we're going to raise that up a little bit. The thing is, what we want to do is we want to raise that high self committee's soul consciousness to the absolute highest level. So where are they now? One or two? It's on page two. And yes, now we got that raised up to the highest level. So now we're working with the right team. Okay. So that's the first thing. That's the first step. We think we we make sure that you got your right the team with you that is the best one to do the job. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to check in with a chart called miscellaneous blocks. And miscellaneous blocks are the ones that we're going to look into to see which ones are, um, what's blocking you today? What is What are those things today that are in your way to prevent you from having any clearing today? So that's in what we call chart 10A. There's actually 32 charts, but there's actually more than 32 charts because there a few of them have A's and B's involved. Mm -hmm. So it's more it's more like 40 charts. So okay. first of all, we're going to take a look at that. And okay, so first thing that came up with was curses. Ooh. Next thing that's coming up. <laughs> There's about three or four okay. things usually when we look in, the, in it with that. We have polarity beliefs. You're going to give us some explanation on these, right? So we know yes. what we're talking Cur about. Uh, curses are not necessarily things that um, people have inflicted upon us because when we look at SRT and even with law of attraction, it's not really about other people. It's about you. It's everything is about you. So these are cur these are curses that you've self limitations that you've done 
you that you've placed on yourself. Polarity yeah. beliefs is a belief in good, bad, um, it, what some people call duality. Mm. So it's a belief that um, there are good things in the world, there are bad things in the world, when in reality, it's neither or neither, just like the law of attraction is doesn't um, discriminate against what you want, if, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, you what you put out, you get. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing we're going to look at, uh, we've got some blocked chakras. Back. <laughs> she already knows that one. <laughs> yeah, blocked chakra, yeah, and 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 for people who don't know, your chakras are the energy centers. Uh, there's seven energy centers along your spine that um, uh, help facilitate energy flow, your connection to the earth and connection to the non-physical. When any one of them is blocked, it can block your ability to um, receive uh, wisdom, wisdom and to be grounded. Hmm. And last but not least, we have subconscious clutter. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> and subconscious clutter is that uh, basically too much going on in the noggin, mm -hmm. where you've got where it's difficult to focus. So what we're going to do is we take those four, and we say to your high self committee, please clear those. We want them all nice and clear, so that way we can work on the other stuff. And then what we're doing, what I'm doing is I'm, when the, when the pendulum is doing a circular motion like this, it means it's clearing. And what I'm waiting for is for it to do that when it's, when it goes in the up and down position, then we know we're clear. Hmm. And the way the pendulum works is it works with the subtle muscle movements of my arm. So it's, it's total unconscious movement. And so um, a yes response is the up and down. A no response is left and right, and then when we're clearing, it goes in a circular motion. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people some people believe that if it's in a if it's in a clockwise, that's a good thing, and it's in an anti-clockwise, it's a bad thing. Um, I haven't seen. I think it just comes down to personal taste at that point. Uh, <laughs> as long as the circular motion is doing work. Next place we go to is we have to check out what if you've got any um, vow programs going. And vows are things that you make promises to yourself that can get in the way of your clearing. You know, so if um, these are can be conscious vows, these can be sub unconscious vows. And so what we're going to look at right now is three or four items on that chart as well. Okay, first one is subservience. Second one is obsessive thoughts. Oh, back. <laughs> At least you're in tune now. Actually, you know what the difficulties Third are. One. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Third one is manifest results. And the fourth one, is there a fourth one? Yes, show me. Is purity. So what this is saying is that there is an unconscious vow that you're going to be subservient. So you're going to um, be uh, basically a um, a self-proclaimed slave to an idea or person. Obsessive thoughts is things that are rolling in your head that you can't get out of your head. Mm -hmm. um, manifesting results is where you're concentrating on a result without understanding the work involved to get there. And mm -hmm. a vow of purity is where you are looking for something on the outside that is pure and perfect to allow that into your life. So you're, what you want is something that is 
perfect and you're not allowing anything in that is imperfect. So that's another thing that's that we need to look at. So that that's another thing we need to clear. So these are self about I mean, is this resonating so far? Yeah, I was just talking about that purity thing with uh, my friend last night and I decided to let let something in. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's amazing how accurate this stuff can be. So we're mm. going to clear those. Get those out of the way. By the way, these hashtags are crazy. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, it's great clear. because they're all about me, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all about me. That's a, it's me. <laughs> It's the Alex show. <laughs> it's the Alex show. Da, 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 da. <laughs> okay. Last thing we're going to check into is we're going to check into your mother and father energy. How we oh, feel about boy. mom and dad. Because <laughs> the, the reason why we do this is we need to check we because your mother and father are the doorway to your physical existence. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is we need to first check in to see where your positive and negative energies are with them. And then we need to raise them to 100% positive and 0% negative. So the first oh. thing we're gonna do is we check, in, we check in with mom and find out what is the percentage of positive energy with mom right now. 80% positive, not bad. 80, that's it? She's amazing. 80. 80, 80 percent positive. What is the percentage of negative energy with mom right now, it's only 10%, excellent. And oh. it doesn't matter that it comes up to 100%. When we're talking about percentages, oh, we're, only, okay. we're only talking about um, degrees of intensity. Okay. So if we don't add up to 100%, don't worry about it. Okay, <laughs> now we're gonna check in with dad. What is the percentage of positive energy with dad right now? It is now at 30%. <laughs> That's like <laughs> And I won't the, even ask you if, if that's lower or higher than you expected. <laughs> right. I'm definitely the higher than energy I with dad right now is at 20%, which isn't Actually, terrible. You know that's right. That's that's probably right. So now what we're <laughs> going to do is we're going to raise that energy to 100% positive and 0% negative without research. Okay. Right, now that's all set. And this is what we call our prep to work. So we, whenever okay. we're, we're meeting with a new client and whatever, and we're, and um, the, the prep to work, when I see a repeat client is really, is very quick because this mm -hmm. is whenever I'm meeting with a new client, we, we do this prep to work. So that way we can be sure that we are uh, on the right wavelength. So. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to look at is now now we're ready to now we're ready to get into the meat and bones here. Ooh, so we're going to let's so let's look at the <laughs> insomnia and let's see where it takes us. I have no idea where this is going to where this is going to start where this is going to go, and that's the good thing because the first thing we do is we let go of any expectations. Okay, now before I get into this, are they are there any um Walt, are there any comments or whatever on the Facebook group that that are coming through? Uh mostly just greetings, saying hello to us, to each other and so forth. So nothing specific okay. to what we're doing yet. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's get going. First place we're going to go. Well, first of all, let's ask if yes, yeah, so this is where we're going to go. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna first go to ten B which is 10B is programs created by spirit. So we go to 10B and let's take a look. What's the, where are we going? All right, experience is the process. All right. Now I always go to three or four charts with each question because what I'm looking mm -hmm. for is a story. I'm looking for a, I'm trying to get a complete picture of what's going on. Uh, so that way we can go as deep as possible and really explore an issue. So 
right now it's going to experience the process. It doesn't tell us a whole lot. So we're going to go on to the next one. Bill, and what are the names of these charts? I'm sorry? What are the name of these charts? The name of the chart, uh, the first chart is um, uh, program or who are, they, who are they done by? Like what's the? Oh, Robert Detzler. Way? Robert Detzler. D E T Z L E R. Okay. Okay. All right. And actually, you can find out all about them on at the Spiritual Response Association website, is which is spiritualresponse.com, all one word. Okay. All right. So where was I? Where is what did I say? It was chart 15. We're going to chart 15, which is I M level consciousness programs. Um, that gets a little deep probably more time that will require more expl explanation than I have time to get into but <laughs> suffice it to say this I am level consciousness programs have to do with programs that are placed in the soul record when the soul is developing consciousness okay hmm. Okay, so we have a dysfunction of creative energy. <laughs> okay, again, so now so far we have experiences the process dysfunction of creative energy. So moving on, we go to chart 25, which is called final assurance. Okay, and that one goes to things that are hidden, buried, and covered up, or covered up. Things that are hidden, buried, or covered up. Don't tell them where I buried that dead body. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hidden, buried, or covered up. That's interesting. Do we have another chart to go to? We do. Show me. All right, we're going to chart 26, which is called Freedom is Free. Show me. Okay. Okay. This one comes to illness. This one is illness is only an illusion. a nice confirmation of something I've believed all along now. Yeah. And so, is there another chart to go to? There is another car chart to go to. Show me. Going to chart 23, which is Spirit Realm Program. We're going into high-level programs here. Spirit Realm Program. Now this is getting esoteric, so this is going to embryo of the universe. That's pretty esoteric. Yep. And tell us again what you're doing each time you're checking a chart, because we ah! can see you, but we can't see what you're doing on okay. the chart. What I'm doing is I start with, uh, you can see it, I start with the front, this chart, which is the one in mm -hmm. the front. Mm -hmm. um, and this, and on this chart, there are various numbers. And that yeah. tells me which chart to go to. And then I go to that chart and then. When you say this, it, it shows itself. you which chart to go to. How, how does it show you? I mean, how, how does. Oh, how, how does it show me? Yeah. How it shows me is I put the, sh I hold the pendulum over the chart and then I ask it to show me where it go, where to go. And then it, so it then it starts yeah. swinging in a, in a direction. And then I know what, oh, okay. then it's telling me where to go. Okay. Okay. Is there another chart to look at here? No. Okay. So we have our 
are four items. Actually, no, we have five items. Experience of the process, dysfunctional mm-hmm. creative energy, things that are covered up, hidden, and un, uh, things we can't see. Illness is only an illusion, an embryo of the universe. So what is this telling me? Well, huh? I think you're about to answer the question, but Jeffrey's asking, what do you have all this knowledge? What do we do with it? Well, when, once we have it all, we what we do is then we look for a pattern in relation to the question that was asked. And the question that was asked is, what is the source or purpose of Alex's insomnia? Or where's, if if not the source, what is, where's the malfunction happening? Mm-hmm. Okay. According to the soul record. Okay. And this is, this is where I tune in to spirit to kind of fill in the blanks. And so I, I look at the pattern and then I allow spirit to tell me the story. So here, what I'm looking at is the insomnia scene appears to be related to your creative energies. <clears throat> it's, it appears that you have things that you want to share with the world, mm-hmm. things, things that you want to, um, want to give birth to, ideas that you want to give birth to, um, but they are difficult to get to in your waking state. Mm. Um, and so your soul made a contract that it was going to deprive you of sleep (laughs) to achieve an unconscious waking state. Well, okay. That that resonates? Show me. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm getting 100% accuracy on that. Because that's where I get my best jokes from is when I when I do get some sleep. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what is the percentage of positive benefit that the insomnia is doing for Alex? And I'm getting a 5% benefit. Which means what, what is the percentage of harm that the insomnia is doing for Alex? And I'm getting a 90% harm. Dang. <laughs> so this is not a not good news. No, this is not good news. This is not. <laughs> this is something you don't want to continue. So well, I'm trying. <laughs> so what we can do. Yeah. What we're what we're going to do now is we're going to inform our high self committee mm-hmm. and our high selves. This is something we don't want. What mm-hmm. we want is to let that creative energy out. And we can only okay. do that with a um, with a clear mind and a rested mind. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to inform the universe of this is what we want. We want a clear and rested mind so that way we can give birth to the ideas and the creative flow. And so okay. we now tell high self that this is what we want to apply. This is what we want to clear. And we wait for high self to let us know that we're done. And there we go. Done. Now it's okay. clear. Now, some people believe that once we clear something, yay, it's all magically cleared, and we don't have to do anything now. We just let the magic mm-hmm. happen. That's not necessarily true. What this does is it opens the door to allow your soul to communicate to your high self and your high and the unconscious, your subconscious and whatever, to let them know, okay, all right, I know why I'm doing this now. Now it's time to let that go, to let go, let go of that old pattern that was hurting me and let mm-hmm. in the energy that, that is going to not hurt me anymore. So now we know what's the block. 
right. know, there was some, there was some fear of letting this letting this uh, creative beast out of the, the creative uh, genie out of the bottle. So now we've let that go, and now we can say to the say to the mind and the and the consciousness say, okay, we're ready to go. We're re I'm I'm ready to let this work. But in, to do that, body, mind, spirit, we need to work together on this. And yeah. we work together in this by getting adequate rest. Mm -hmm. And there we go. And then you just had your first clearing. Yay! Yay! So what's your, what do you think? What do you, what's your reaction? Very interesting. Like. I don't. I, I I can't believe how much uh, stuff came up about me that is so true. Cool. <laughs> that it's, is good. It is quite. Every time I see a new client, there, I I am always, as the practitioner, I get blown away at how yeah. accurate we are because I generally don't know my clients when they first see me because, and I and I do that intentionally because the less I know about them, the more accurate the readings are. Because mm -hmm. I don't allow my, because if I know them really, really well, I can sometimes let my ego get in the way. Because yeah. I, have, yeah. I have certain beliefs, I have certain prejudices about that person or, or their life because I know, already know them. But if I mm -hmm. don't know them, then I can just let the information flow out and I can be honest and I can just speak the truth that as it's presented and it's it's a good thing and and, um, yeah. and the the client gets a great deal of benefit from the from the experience okay yeah. we've got okay. some comments and questions um Excellent. and i have a question too uh, my question is it seems like this is all oriented towards someone who's trying to resolve a particular thing so am i correct in this yeah. in kind of inferring this doesn't really work well for somebody who just says Figure something out for me. You gotta have a you gotta have it, a, clear, a clear question in mind. Well, um, I sometimes when people are clueless, what I'll do sometimes is I'll call it pendulum choice. <laughs> 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 and the and the it's a little more challenging that way because without a focusing question, sometimes it just goes very esoteric. <laughs> mm. And but what's interesting about that is. People don't sometimes don't know what is blocking them, and they're like, I, you know, I just don't know. Can you just figure out what's blocking me, and then we'll come up with something, we'll clear it, and then all of a sudden, oh, I got a question now because now we've uh, unblocked it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that that sounds like that would be valuable to a lot of people because I, I kind of get the impression people get very confused about what's going on inside and. And so they, they kind of reach for whatever question they can reach for because it's the best they can come up with at that time. But it's you know, mm -hmm. really clear, clear what they want. So. Okay. Anyway, let me go to some of the questions that have been raised. Um, first, Shelly asks, what do you usually charge for these readings? I charge uh, $60 an hour. Uh, okay. Uh, first clearings are generally two hours long uh, for us. It gives us time to get to know each other, get through the, the uh, preliminary um, when, what we did with Alex was actually a pretty quick um, uh, prep to work. Uh, to do the prep to work very uh, thoroughly uh, generally takes about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. So sometimes, because depending on what kind of blocks we get through the prep, prep to work, now Alex was pretty open, so we were able to get through a lot of that pretty quickly. Uh, but if she was like really blocked or had a lot of anxiety or a lot of um uh fear around the reading itself uh then the prep to work can take longer which is why for a first session i usually go two hours but then after that it would be uh, just an hour after that per session mm -hmm. okay and then jeffrey actually had a comment he says you and linda would make a fun and healing show i would Armstrong. absolutely love to do a show with because i listen to linda's show every time you're on and Every time she says something, I'm like, right on, sister. And sometimes <laughs> when she says, no offense, Walt, it goes right over your head. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like but hey. it's so obvious. 
<laughs> Bill, that's the beauty of running a podcast like this, because when you have so many people who are such high level, high quality people, about 80% of it runs over my head. And if I can get it down to 50%, I'm doing well. So, you yeah. know. <laughs> no offense taken, I, I promise yeah. you. And, and then uh, Min asks, can I get a clearing on past memories? Past memories, absolutely. Yes, I can do that. Um, uh, when it comes to past memories, what we do is we'll, um, first of all, we'll have to, we focus on the, the memory itself, it, um, uh, especially when it comes to trauma. We can definitely clear trauma using this. Mm. If, past, if past memories are specific to a, um, uh, an incidence of trauma, then what we can do is we can go into the soul record to find out what is the lesson that trauma was trying to teach you. Because even when we're looking at past lives or present lives and whatever, each traumatic event that we have has a soul lesson. And then once we discover what that soul lesson is, we can then clear it so that way we no longer have to repeat it. So absolutely, we can clear past memories with that. Very cool. And then Jeffrey has a question. He says, so we can discover and release our unwanted patterns by using this method? Absolutely. And using this method, you can absolutely get rid of unwanted patterns. Uh, for example, if you are the type of person who is uh, ha always attracting the wrong kind of mate or you're looking for the wrong, going into the wrong kind of relationships all the time, and that seems to be a repeating pattern, Maybe you had uh, your everybody you date is just like your dad, or every but every person you date is has certain characteristics that are um, uh, that are not good for you. Then we can clear those patterns, and so that way you can then uh, manifest you. Then you can push out to the universe what you want, and not let your subconscious mind attract what you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> because your subconscious mind, uh, I mean, as much as you, you, you can meditate and you can focus and say, this is what I want, this is what I want, and concentrate on that, if your subconscious mind is constantly bringing up what you don't want, you're still going to keep attracting what you don't want because yep, that record okay. is still running in that back of your mind. <laughs> yep. And isn't that annoying? <laughs> <All right. laughs> that is very annoying. <laughs> like if what, you say, I, I want to play it again. Because <laughs> like, if you if you like, for example, even for money, you like you know, I'm trying to manifest, you know, I, I more money, more money, more money, and at the same time, you're thinking to yourself, mm, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. I'm... <laughs> it's that's not not gonna work. <laughs> Not really, no. Yeah. Although I would suspect for most people who are in the deliberate creator category, we've kind of learned to avoid that particular trip because that that's more of an obvious one. So we we yeah, probably it is to get tripped one. up on more on on the more subtle ones. You know, the ones yes. where you know, well, we're trying to be politically correct about the way we're saying this, but deep down, we really aren't feeling it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> I love everybody except them. <laughs> <laughs> but publicly, I really do love them. Yeah, but publicly, I really <laughs> love them. Publicly, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. That's, actually, that was the mindset I had when I was trying to do the script writing this weekend, but that's another story. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> well, you have to. You have to kind of get into the character's mind, you know, because we're right, this first right. episode, we're trying to create somebody who's just basically in a downward negative spiral. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's a tough mindset to, to put yourself into. In fact, Alex, Louise, and I were having a conversation. We realized we got to be really careful, you and I. We've got to make sure that we do things to, to kind of clear up our own heads after we've been doing some of the script writing, because otherwise we'll drag ourselves down. Oh, I down know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like method so. acting. You've got to be able to come out of your character when you're done. Right. Exactly. Otherwise, that, that'll drive you crazy. Yes. Yes. No doubt about that. That's when we'll have to go to Bill and get cleared again. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Always there for you. 
<laughs> oh, that's nice to know. So I, let's see, do we have other questions here? Uh, oh, Jeffrey says, I want to clear out my procrastination, but I keep putting it off. Well, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shirley points out at one point that program kept you safe, so it's trying to keep doing that. Right. That is that is right. Yes. And it's true. It's very true. It, it that's where you have to kind of say to the program, "Thank you very much. I appreciate what you've been doing. Time to move on." And here's yeah. the, here's, the, here's the pendulum to kind of show you which way to go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and, Don't let yeah, the pendulum hit you with a good lord split you. Right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, and and these um uh, and this is why I always tell my clients too that yes, even though we've cleared it, doesn't mean that the work is stopped. In fact, the work gets a lot harder after you've cleared a program. So I'm not getting a good night's sleep tonight, is what you're saying. I'm not. I didn't say that. I said that you <laughs> very well could get a good night's sleep tonight, but the but the work gets harder from now on because now since we've cleared the program that safe place for you to go into that nice little cocoon for you to go to yeah um, it's not there for you anymore and which can be a scarier place to be mm. because now you've got now all you have is your is yourself to deal with mm -hmm. and now we can now you can do the work to reestablish the program that's, mm -hmm. uh, do you that are you, that is your choice you can absolutely yeah reestablish the program and not get a good night's sleep tonight and whatever mm -hmm. or you can make the choice saying okay now i know that this is clear and not part of my soul record anymore i mm -hmm. rather i would rather that not come back wouldn't it be okay. nice not to have that anymore th that that place to go and instead find a better place to be yeah and and allow that curiosity to pick in to peek in because here's here's what we were trying to this is what you were trying to protect yourself from you were trying to protect yourself from that creative egg in your soul from creating something beautiful allow the curiosity to of what that could possibly be be okay. your motivation to get there. <laughs> okay. To not reestablish that program. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit. But um, a, a lot of this obviously is work she has to do herself. Yes. What role, if any, does would, would additional sessions with you play in the process? Like, who's doing what? Where, where's the division of labor here? The division of labor is primarily with the client. The the, the work is done with them. What multiple sessions do with me is allows us to start peeling away the onion. Um, yes, right now we've cleared one program, but life is more than just one program. Life is mm -hmm. lots and lots of programs. And right now, you know, we we picked this one because it was the elephant in the room. You know, it was it was something that is um, that is something that is causing dysfunction right now it is a very immediate acute problem that has been going on for a long time let's fix that first and then after we fix the one thing then other things will come up it's like okay all right now that that's clear and now i'm starting to, to bring forth this creative stuff and now i think a life partner would be nice <laughs> and Word. now now it <laughs> You know, and that those sort of things. So, what that's what that's what the benefit of a multiple of multiple sessions with me would do. Um, I have one uh, client that I've been seeing on a weekly basis since November. Now that's unusual, uh, but this particular person needs a great deal of emotional support as well as clearing support. Mm -hmm. uh, most uh, clients are usually between two to ten sessions mm -hmm. um I, I get a few one-offs you know i do one session with them they're like hey that's great and i feel better and they move on their way and that's fine I, a one session is great if you're already in a nice healing space um i have had some clients come and see me 
where one session freaked them out so badly they never wanted to call me again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they, you obviously, that story, they obviously <laughs> weren't ready. They weren't ready to uh, work on themselves right. because you know mm -hmm. when uh, what what you will not find from a session with me is me saying you don't need to do any work. I got you covered. That's that's mm -hmm. not right. how it works. The the division of labor is definitely on the client. It is your choice to be better and to change your life to to make a better uh, to live that highest destiny. And we and that's something else we can do. We also involve spiritual coaching because once we clear the programs and you want to say, okay, now that I have cleared my programs. I want to know what I was really meant to do in this life. What is my highest destiny? And we can go there that way too. And then we can devise strategies uh, that you can do to do that, including LOA today or whatever else that we're going to be uh, that would benefit that person. So now, I'm not, a, I'm not a licensed here. counselor, but sometimes <laughs> I'll refer out people for that. And sometimes I've had clients that I've worked with that uh, need acupuncture, mm. and so <laughs> that to, works. I refer them to my to to Nina. Uh, there are other ones that require uh, more aggressive uh, trauma counseling, and so I've mm. got people I can refer to with that as well. Because sometimes okay. sometimes people will come to me and they've got stuff that is out of my league or out of my skill level, and I have a nice little list of people that I refer out to. That's a good thing. Um, let, let, let's take it back to what you were talking about before about how the division of labor is tilted significantly toward the client. Mm -hmm. And you, you go through a session, a first session with a client, and at the end of that session, a, a, a major elephant in the room, as you described it, has been cleared. Yeah. Okay. Presumably the client has gotten some information from you that that kind of confirms and reinforces yes you're on the right path yes you're talking about the right stuff and so forth right but I can also see somebody coming out of a session saying thank you so much this is great now I know I need to work on some stuff and then they leave the session and they say so what do I do next yeah mm. well that's and that's where the counseling comes in uh, because uh, what we'll do is um, I tell them at the end of the session, so I tell them what their next steps are. You know, mm -hmm. the next steps is to, first of all, sit on it for a while, uh, think about it, meditate on it, do what you need to do to um, figure out what this new you is. What mm -hmm. is this mm -hmm. you without the program we just cleared? And okay. um, And if they need... Uh, whatever it is they need, if they if they feel like they need to go to somebody else, go to a different kind of life coach, or go to a different kind of um, therapy or whatever, then that's why I keep my list of people that I can refer them to. Okay. Uh, but if that's not if they want to continue with me, that's fine too. We can peel that onion is all the way down to the core if we want to, you know, tear away all of those programs. And try and work to build something much, much better. Shelly also has a follow-up question, and it's it's pertinent to uh, to this time period we're in right now. Uh, it says, uh, Bill, what do you think about Mercury retrograde? Is it a good excuse just to let things go bad, or right? <laughs> Mercury retrograde. I've got so many friends who are really into that. <laughs> <laughs> I have found for myself, Mercury, Mercury retrograde is generally not a great creative time. That's mm -hmm. not the time to start creative projects. And the fact that we are in the middle of Mercury at retrograde may explain why you guys are having challenges getting the script started. But it certainly explains why we had trouble connecting to Facebook because Facebook had all kinds of problems last that's week. That's true. <laughs> now, um, I don't necessarily, while I'll acknowledge the existence of astrological phenomenon having an influence on people, 
when it comes down to the connection to your soul and your high self and your high self committee, you are in charge of that. Mm -hmm. So you have, so you have free will when it comes to that. People who rely too heavily on astrology are giving up their power, their personal power to that belief system. Mm. And so what I do is I acknowledge it. I know it's there, but then I clear that belief. I, mm -hmm. By clearing the belief that frees me up to do whatever I need to do that day, right now, in this moment, to do whatever I need to do, despite whatever astrological stuff's happening out there. Mm -hmm. And if you can get yourself to that cleared place, because in the non-physical world, they don't care about planetary movements, because that's all physical realm. <laughs> right. Here is here is dense, here is heavy, whatever. That's what we're dealing with. Um, so yes, there is some validity to that, but at the same time, you can you can transcend that. I'm reminded of the phrase, and I can't remember who said it. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, either way, you're right. Either way, you're and right. right. <laughs> I think that kind of applies here too. I mean, it, yeah. Uh, either you believe that astrological forces have an impact or you don't but either way you're right <laughs> and it's uh it's kind of a it's kind of a, a splash of water at the face like whoa oh okay so it's really me mm -hmm. I'm doing <laughs> you're the problem <laughs> <laughs> you're the solution actually yeah solution. that too yeah and you know i i i remember one time I mean, this was about i'm gonna say six or seven years ago my sister had a couple of friends, a couple of old ladies in Charlottesville, Virginia, who were mm -hmm. both psychic. Um, one of them was also an astrologer, and the other mm -hmm. one was gen generically psychic. And we met them at Monticello, which was kind of fun, um, and uh, did, you know, did a tour of Monticello and then met, met them afterward at the pub. I can't think what the name of the pub is that's there, but there's this very famous pub that dates back to Jefferson's time. Uh, but we met them at the pub and we had some lunch and so forth and they gave us all readings as you know part of our uh, getting together there and the one who is very much into the astrology did all of her readings purely from an astrological point of view and the other mm -hmm. one did and what was interesting is each of them using their own modalities they didn't say the same things but they came up with very much along the same lines when they were talking yeah. about each one of us and yeah it, it wasn't like, they, I mean, they were all, we were all sitting at the same table, but it wasn't like they were piggybacking on each other because one would be giving a reading to one person while the other would be giving a reading to another person and there was so much crosstalk going on, nobody knew, you know, what was going on in the other conversation. So right. it's not like that opportunity, but it was interesting. They they both had their own modalities and, and it worked for both of them. Mm -hmm. so whether you believe it or not, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really true of, of law of attraction too. I mean, I, I remember this is a conversation Joel Elston and I have had that um, he had a friend, has a friend who is, I think a psychiatrist and his psychiatrist uh, decided one day to try to convince him that all this law of attraction stuff was a bunch of bunk. And yeah. uh, this is a conversation they've had numerous times. And finally, at one point, the psychiatrist said, look, Joel, I, I'm not doubting you that you've had some great results with clients and so forth and that, it's been effective, but you do understand, you do acknowledge the issue, don't you? That the only reason this works is because you believe it works. And Joel says, yes, That's thank you, you prove point. my point. <laughs> you, you got it, congratulations. <laughs> you have now graduated, thank That's you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, luckily, my psychiatrist believes in law of attraction and is a fan of the show, so I don't have an issue. <laughs> Well, 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 then to Alex's psychiatrist, thanks for being a, a fan of the show and thanks for making her uh, therapy so much easier because now she doesn't have to fight you about that. You guys can just be on the same path and it's great. I love right? that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we, we agree on everything anyway. It's fine. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. Uh, um, let's see. Min has a little message. She says, see you later, Bill. I'm going to start meditations. I think you've kind of gotten her uh, thought process going here, Bill. So. Very good. 
wouldn't be surprised if you got a contact there at some point. So thank you for tuning in. Then we appreciate that. Um, got about five minutes left. I want to make sure that we remind people about subscribing. I've been trying to make that a point to do more and more often lately, and that is encourage people. If you're not yet a subscriber, please you know do so. We're, we've even made it more simple than ever before. If you just go to the homepage of our website. LOAToday.net, you'll now see at the top of the page that whatever device you're using is going to show you a link for your device. So you just click on it and it walks you through the steps of subscribing. And just like that, you've got all of the episodes coming right to your smartphone every time that we do an episode. And then, of course, be sure that you're sharing the fact that you're listening each time that you listen with people on social media and so forth so that they can get their daily dose of happy. And I uh, just want to make sure we get the word out and remind people of that because that's how we grow the show. That's how we get more and more people tuning in. And so, don't forget to yeah. subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> and on YouTube, are, that's right. And on YouTube. We are we have, including... We, we, have board, two, yeah. we have two channels, don't we? We do. We have one channel that is just the video version, and the second right. channel is basically the podcast but with no pictures. Okay. So if you want to subscribe to the video channel, go to LOA Today video po podcast videos. That's what it is. Right. And right. if you enjoy the show, jump down below and hit the subscribe button and also hit that little bell so you'll be notified every time we do an episode and you won't miss anything. See, that's why I count on you. You always remember those nice little details that are so important. That's really great. <laughs> And we are including the link to that particular channel, the the one that has the videos. Yeah. Now we're including that every time that we do a description. So you can look in the description for this particular podcast and you'll see a link that'll take you right there. So that's the quick way to get yep. there. So good stuff. So with a couple minutes left, I, I'm gonna go back to you, Alex. I'm gonna ask you, what what's your overall take? Now that you've been through a session with Bill, what's your take on it? What do you think of it? I'm like so like excited. Like I want to like go see a psychic. I want to go see a medium. I want to like get let's <laughs> do all the rounds, get it all together. I want to know who's on my committee because I need to know mm -hmm. who's talking up there and, yeah. <laughs> and whether to believe them be, depending on who it is. Because <laughs> I got some people are not reliable. We're not reliable on this side. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to know who the other seven are, right? <laughs> we we picked all the two out. The two reliable ones were the ones that Bill kept. The other two, let, yeah. the other seven, okay, go away. I was surprised later. that there were nine people there. I was not surprised because there was a, there's been a lot of people in my life that have passed. So uh -huh. yeah, I want to yeah. I I really want to know who the two that were of, of the highest. And I'm like, hmm, okay. They they may <laughs> not be anybody you know. <laughs> oh, okay. They, your high self committee could be could consist of entities that have never incarnated. Ooh, okay, all right. So okay. this is the um, person of Abraham, then. Yeah, mm. it could be, it could be. Um, okay, I just uh, while we still got a, a couple minutes, I just wanted to let everybody know that this weekend I am going to be going to the holistic. Um, I'm sorry, the Mind Body Expo in Saratoga Springs, New York. On So it's March 23rd. It goes from uh, 10 o'clock in the morning to 6 at night, and a, admission is free. I'm going as a, I'm not going as a, as a participant. I'm just going as a person who is going. But I just mm -hmm. thought I'd, th I'd shout that out there. Um, okay. If you're interested in anything that I'm doing or you heard, what you heard on the podcast sounds interesting to you, I can be reached at my website, which is um, www.ninag.com. That's N-I-N-A-G-E-E.com. Um, there's a link in there for services, and you, you'll see me, you'll find me that way. I also have a weekly blog there, and I have two books available on Amazon. Well, you, you just saved me, because I was gonna ask you to give people contact information, but you just did it, so thank you. There I you mean, go. Did the, did the pendulum tell that? Right I don't know. Well. <laughs> I think I'm just going to take a vacation. I'm not needed here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You're the button pusher. We need you. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, <laughs> then I'm going to say thank you to everybody who came by to watch me push my buttons and to have everybody push <laughs> buttons on me. Thank you to all of our live stream listeners. Thank you to our podcast listeners. And thank you, Bill, for uh, sharing this with us. This is fun. This is a good activity. No problem. Anytime. 
Yeah. Thank you, Ox, for being the volunteer as well. You, you did it brilliantly, I must say. I tried. <laughs> and on that light note, we will say we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.